because we believe that the next generation is to take over. Our professional, we are completely a professional-led company. We have made, we are a very different, we started as an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial company, moved into an entrepreneur, professional company. Today we have a model which is PE model, we call it, which is a professional entrepreneur. Led by professionals, supported by entrepreneurs like us. If there's any bad news to take into my investor, partners, board, government, I'm there to put my head down the shopping block. Let all the glory be with them because they're the ones who are doing it. So we have to reinvent, start doing different things. There's so many things. Come on. I started working when I was 18. It's long years. I'm 55. It is long years, 37 years. You're burnt out, especially when you're working in this country. You are burnt out. We're doing so much of different kind of stuff. So you've got to reinvent. That's where think tanks, that's where you go start learning more. You start engaging with people. So you have to reinvent. Never hang your boots. Yes, next generation will have less fire. Obviously, they have everything on the, you know, on the, on the platter, which raises another question, what do you do with the next generation? Answer is keep them away. Simply. So this is the way we, we, we you know, have in our mind. Let them do what they want to do. Let them do what they enjoy. Don't bring them to the mainstream so quickly that they are 27, 28, and then done with. One thing I want to leave it, you know, I went, I started at 18 when I just finished my college. I went to Harvard many years later that I can tell my grandchildren that I went to Harvard. It's kind of a bogus degree, I have to say, I have to admit. It's like a management, you know, compressed in three years kind of thing. Three is a compressed MBA as they call it. But more for a tag, honestly, than to have learned very much at that age. So Rajan, what you mean to say to us is that it is everybody's prerogative, not only an entrepreneur's, but everybody's prerogative uh, to reinvent oneself at every stage, to think out of the box and make yourself new roles in one's life, you know. Uh, a personal question. In retrospect, any regrets regarding family life, wife, wife time, family time, uh, hobbies left unpursued on the way, friends and confidants lost on the way, we understand building an empire of the stature of Bharti Enterprises has been a very time, energy, and mind-consuming job. And you can be candid. No media. You know, all, always regrets. Always, you know, uh, we never saw a youth. When you're 18, that's the time. We never saw it because we had to build our own life. We were very clear. We want to do something which is transformational. We want to do something which is impactful. Uh, for us in the society. There were our thoughts, that's what we were kind of taught through. So obviously, you know, you work all day and then all you think is work, 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 you lose. As you grow into more, into a different life, of course. Uh, spend time with children has been so very less and they've suddenly grown and gone and they've taken a flight and they're gone. Once the kids leave home, we know how it works now. You call them, I'm in school, I'm in college, I'm in busy, I'm with my girlfriend. Sorry, call you later, that call never comes. So, there is regret. I wanted to be a sportsman. But my father said, it doesn't pay you your bills. I said, yeah, I know that. So, is it a regret? I don't know if it would have been good or bad, but I did play to a different level, which was enjoyable. So, there always will be there, but I guess, such is life, that you have to move on. And this is where I think reinvention should happen. Not that you want to become a youngster again and, you know, party till 5 o'clock, but you need to start doing something different that probably you could never manage. Okay, how does the, how does the title Bharti come to uh, the names and to the enterprise? Uh, Rajan, Bharti, Mittal. I, 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 I understand the progeny came from Satpal Mittal. So how, how does the firm, the enterprise now carry the name Bharti to it? In fact, all the initiatives particularly carry the name Bharti. Uh, you know, my, my, me and my, my two brothers, uh, our college leaving certificate only says Bharti. When we moved to Delhi because of my father being around and everywhere I went and I saw, I had to introduce, I had to extend my name. But our birth certificates and our college certificates really was only remains Bharti. My father, that many years back, stepped out of his life because he was one of uh, the kids who was the only educated one. So they wanted him to get married into a society which wanted to give dowry. My father was opposed to it. He married outside the caste at that time. 
you know, those many years. So that's how when my father said they will not carry no surname and my mother said that can't be possible, you have to carry a surname. So he said Bharti, which meant Indian. So that's how, you know, he was a forward thinking man, I have to say. And that's why Bharti. So that's how we started our organization on a Bharti and we have to extend our name. That's really, really uh, very, very complimentary to the country and to all of us Indians here. Now, as the old adage goes, Rajan, with power comes responsibility and with great power comes great responsibility. And uh, Bharti Enterprises being one of the top-notch corporate houses of the country, with its uh, flagship company, Bharti Airtel, being the fourth largest operator in the world, is definitely in a position of power and responsibility to the extent of making a change. And a remarkable one at that. You all will agree with me. So what are your initiatives towards corporate social responsibility? You know, uh, you know the new law which says that 2% uh, of your profits have to be spent on CSR. I think it's a retrograde step. Uh, I've been you know, talking with the governments of the day that you have to allow people to do. Corporates, to be honest, are there to make profits at the end of the day. They are not there to do the corporate social responsibility. But there are ways and means to tackle that, give them incentives, don't be punitive. But having said that, I strongly believe that uh, corporates have to play a role wherever they can. And this country is so large, so big, so much calamity, so much natural problems. And we are besieged of all of that. Uh, you know, we picked up education as because my, my, my father was very much interested in education. And he believed that education is the only way that we can actually motivate, guide. You know, a lot of problems get solved if you're educated. You know, civic sense. We are talking about Swachh Bharat now. I mean, come on. After so many years, this is what we have to start with because people don't understand. There's no civic sense. So education is very close to us. Uh, so, we, you know, what we did, we sold some of the family equity, put into Bharti Foundation, which manages schools now. Uh, so we have about 54,000 children at the rural India level, especially for a girl child, the school. Because when we examined this proposition, the girl uh, dropped out of school after fourth or fifth, yeah, fourth, because there were no separate toilets for the girls. And they didn't have clothes, so they wouldn't go into tattered clothes. So it is completely bizarre that, you know, you have to drop out because of that. So we are running our school program, especially for a girl child, 54,000 children in India, 24,000 children in Africa, all, all meant for girl child. So we give them everything, books, computers, midday meal, everything that they don't need to pay anything. It's completely philanthropic. We want to do. Prime Minister made a call the other day saying that he wants a corporate to invest in cleaning India. I come from Ludhiana district. We have taken the district over to do the entire sanitation program now. So my teams are working towards it. Uh, hopefully, in two years' time, we'll get that result. But eventually, that asset can only be made possible if people, the citizens, will start managing it. You know, you can't just allow that, okay, I'll build in public, and we've seen it, what happened. So citizens also have to be there. But I, I, I fully agree we are a drop in the ocean. Each one of us has to do. I, I heard you speaking about people contributing for GNK. It's a big calamity. Each one of us, whatever we can do, small, big, whatever we can, we must do that. I, I believe it's the Bharti Foundation with Satya Bharti Schools, which is even operating government schools. That is true. And that's, uh, that's really a very, very path-breaking uh, initiative, which is doing a lot of good work all over villages in India. And uh, we are really, really proud of you in that regard. Uh, may I ask you, whom does the Bharti legacy, comprising of Bharti Airtel, Bharti Infratel, Bharti Retail, Bharti AXA Insurance, Feel Fresh Foods, and BSB go to? Does it go to the next Mithil generation, or will it be meted out professionally on merit? Uh, you know, as I said, we are a completely merit-based organization. All my CEOs, nobody's, I mean, no family member heads anything. And it's very clear, merit will drive it. Uh, they could be shareholders, they could be, you know, trained to be on the board to manage it. But as a CEO, uh, I am very clear, as a family, we are very clear that merit-based uh, completely led will be allowed. It's not because who you are and what you are that will happen. 
there's enough in the world to do for them. And, and I, we also don't want to impose that his interest may be in music and you want him to come and do some business. I think it's, it's not fair in today's generation and they won't even do it. So clearly, while all this is built, the next generation must fight for it if they want to run it. it there's a difference between governing and really running of the two. So we have divorced the two between a shareholders versus the operating. So that will remain. So in that context, the operation of the empire would definitely be handled by professionals. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, finally, unlike a lot of other companies who've made it big in a very short time, Bharti Enterprises has always kept a very low-key public profile and have always attributed their success very humbly to a divine purpose. To quote your chairman, Honestly speaking, because we are, we are battle scarred, I can tell you. In India, to reach where, you know, with, with some divine intervention that we have reached, I can tell you, it is tough. So there must be somebody overlooking this whole, uh, you know, I would say, organization that it has happened. So one must kind of uh, thank it and kind of play its role that we are there for in, in a small way. Wonderful. So again, the Indian way of thinking that there is a superpower dictating the powers on earth and we are doing our work the way he has dictated us to do. Wonderful. This is again Indian traditional uh, work procedure going on into the big conglomerate. And now may we, if you allow us, to do a sneak peek into your personality beyond the professional exterior. <laughs> because women being women, no woman worth her salt interviewing a man will let go only on the professional front. She has to unravel the personality, the likes and the dislikes, to make something of the man. And I can't disappoint women all over. So can we do that, please, with you? Your call, your call, completely. Rajan Bharti's fitness mantra. One hour at the gym. One hour at the gym. Wonderful. Morning, evening? Depends on the night. <laughs> okay, the all-time effective stress but, but, uh, buster for Rajan Bharti Mittal. Sports. Sports. Now, what sport? Well, nowadays, tennis. Uh, tennis and football. Okay. One holiday destination which beckons you time and again? Well, that's a good question. I would say anywhere in mountains. Anywhere in the mountains. Yeah. All right, we leave it to that. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> say, say it again. I missed it. That's why I go. <laughs> so nobody chases me. One gourmet cuisine which makes you forget your diet plan. Say it again. Sorry. One gourmet cuisine which makes you forget your diet plan. You know, Punjabis are Punjabis. <laughs> many, many things can make us forget. But at this stage, you have to be very careful what you eat, what you don't. True, true. But I would say, you know, the traditional Punjabi food. Other than your professional attire, attire of comfort for Rajan Bharti Mittal. Well, you know, I'm mostly in my, you know, suits. But uh, if I'm not, then I would I prefer it, you know, in a, in a track suit. Track suit? Yeah. We'd like to meet the media to cover that one for us. I've never seen him in a tracksuit. <laughs> in public, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> we should have had the media. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One cinema of leisure. Uh, a movie or a, a, All a, a of yawner cinema. of a cinema? A yawner or you know, a I'm movie? Not a big, I'm not a big movie, a buff. movie buff. You know, I'm not. But if I were to pick a movie, I would say Godfather. Wonderful. Wonderful. And music which puts you at peace. Uh, old time Hindi music. Wonderful. And last but not the least, this, your one particular message for all young budding entrepreneurs, particularly young entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs in India. No substitute to hard work. That I can tell you. We have seen enough times, enough times, you know, you, you, I mean, we all read, you know, this guy's got a lottery, $100 million. After one year, he's a pauper or she's a pauper. Because luck will come once knocking at your doorstep. But if you don't do hard work, it just does not really, you know, leave you with a long-term plan. So no substitute to that. And, of course, as I say, always said, women, you know, they always say that if you want to ask something, ask a man. If you want to uh, tell a woman to do something, it has to be you. So the women leaders, and I see enough women leaders, look at our banks. All our banks are led by women. So there's enough opportunity and there's enough there. It's just that it has to be created around. Great. So that was the man. Good. 
the entrepreneur that wasn't bad. with his vision and his mission and now the floor is open to questions more of mr bahajan uh, rajan bharti mittal for you yes madam rajan you just uh, mentioned and i'm very glad to learn about your bharti foundation and you mentioned about the girl child uh, taking a clue from there i would just like to ask you two simple questions 70% of our population is rural so how do you plan to connect them and how it makes business sense uh, one and yeah, second sure. question is about you know these uh, towers i mean forget about the diesel and the radiation part we can you know uh, for time being just ignore that just for the discussion uh this monstrous structures how do you plan to bring, uh, you know build cities aesthetically the urban beautification so let me the, take the first question the education is completely uh, is got nothing to do with our business as i said it's completely uh, for non profit completely philanthropic and we intend to keep it that way i don't want my schools uh, to have kids outside who can't pay that's not the model we are very clear in our thinking uh, as i said we are doing our bit we intend to take it this to half a million students uh, that's the objective to do it and we are building it um, school by school in rural india it'll take few years but that's our job to do it so clearly there is no business angle to this uh, on your second question uh, there are 70% yeah. people of this country living in rural areas how do you plan to connect them i'm talking of your uh, brand and your i'm talking about the telecom industry you know in that sense today there are uh, there are 400 and you know there are 623000 villages in india so we are connected at almost 500 and almost 6 lakh villages we are connected so and if you are talking that far remote where there are 10 people living that may not be connected so will that education go into the next stream which is the e education digitized education that's the intention of this digitization plan that the prime minister has asked for but that just cannot happen on a mobile network because you need a bigger bandwidth pipe now to put in fiber to those places is humongous only governments can do it if you see outside governments actually build the national backbone and then everybody else actually provides the content they will deliver the carriage so that we have to do in sync with the government no private company can do it so hopefully that is starting which is not only about education is about healthcare because doctors don't go to remote villages forget about education nobody goes there so can they at least on the simple uh, you know techniques can they tell what needs to be done farming practices so there are so many elements that can be done so hopefully few years we'll get more digitization and as more digitization happens education is part of that your second question is on this towers that you speak if you travel around you will find everywhere the antennas are there just because there are uh, you know high rise buildings you don't see it if you go to mumbai now you don't see that many towers that you'll see in delhi because all the antennas are on top of the building so you don't need to build a tower towers are needed because you have to do a propagation for that you need height so if you go to connaught place you'll find most uh, of our antennas on the high rise buildings so it's not on that you'll build tower but if you go to the residential areas where there's one floor two floor whatever the case you have to put a tower for propagation so this new thing that what will happen to radiation what will happen to that you know, if you really look through it uh, we are 1/10th of the world norms the who has a norms we are 1/10th of those norms norway is the strict country on radiation probably the strict is norway because they are so activist they can take you to the court they can do anything we are one tenth of norway now this you know whole i can tell you there's an industry which goes through this anti radiation aapko bechte hain ki ye laga lijiye anti radiation ho jata is completely you know uh, completely they want to do their own businesses so as you know the kahawat kehte na halwai apna khana nahi khata but in this case this is not the case i got a tower in my house on top of my own house so anybody to say then some people come say acha tower aapke ghar pe to hai but radiation aapke ghar mein nahi jata because wo tower ki tirchi ray se jata hai radiation now they are explaining me that at least i know where it is so i said theek hai to main aapke ghar pe laga deta hu aapka bach jayega mere ghar pe aa jayegi radiation kitne ne hamare ghar pe mat lagaiye 
Now, this is a this is innate discussion that goes on every day. I have it on my own house. Sunil has his own house. My elder brother, everybody has their own house. So, trust me, there is no radiation. In this country, you'll go before radiation is pollution, I can tell you. Look at the dirt that we have in our cities. I mean, I can give you 10 other things that we'll go. So, that I can assure you, being what I'm, I've seen this entire game plan, there is no iota. Some people want to write a story. If you saw, uh, if you Google it, um, yesterday's Gujarat High Court uh, uh, judgment. What a scathing judgment they've given. That what are you talking about this towers radiation? This one tenth of the world norm. The scientists have spoken. Somebody should have a look at it. Please Google it. Yesterday's Gujarat High Court judgment. Yes, the next question, please. You know, what has happened is, what has happened is, the propagation is done before the flyovers come in. So, uh, the contours keep changing after this city. Look at Delhi, 10 years back and look at Delhi today. The complete contours have changed. So, we have to all the time either, you know, uh, tune it, down tune it, rejig it. It's an ongoing process in a city which is uh, kind of developing in the contours. So, if the steady state cycle would come, you will not have got a problem. Secondly, we are short of spectrum, I can tell you. Now, we are struggling between 2G and 3G. World is moving, moved to 3G. Yeah. We are still struggling. So, what happens is, wherever there is a handshake happening between 2G, 3G, sometime it, the call will drop. And it's not that your call drops, my call drops ha, more further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That drops. I can tell you. That I can tell you. So, it's not that. So, we are facing some technical challenges. We are facing some uh, topographical challenges. But our job is to kind of, you know, meet it every day. And it's just not my network. The entire telecom, because I exchange data with everybody. It's on the net. You can actually go on the, uh, 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 on the net to find the data of all telecom. Everybody's struggling. Everybody's fighting with the government. Okay, one more question. You said you were the sports, you were more inclined to the sports during your young times. Which sports you prefer that time? It was a hockey or a tennis? Or no, I, 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 I used to represent Punjab State and North Zone on table tennis uh, for table India, tennis. yes, okay. at that time. But then, you know, over a period of time, I moved to different sports I played. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, well, the lady at the back, let's yeah. start from the back. Please, I'm okay. and treat both imposters just the same. What would have been, apart from the greatest triumphs in your life, which we've seen ev evolve before our very eyes, what are the disasters that have really hit you as, as you're in your climb up? And what are those learnings that have been so special that you've carried them forward? And my second question was as a corollary to what you were saying for entrepreneurs and fiki, women at least. Your own brother once said, if it's a choice between speed and perfection, always choose speed. Would you say that, or has that changed as you evolved? Would you still choose speed over perfection? Uh, let me take the second question first. Anytime, speed over perfection. Because if you start going into perfection, there's no way you can build scale. Scalability cannot come with perfection because perfection will follow. I'm not saying that you don't intend to do that. That's a given. I would say that's a platform that you always want to strive for. But speed, this organization, this corporate has been built in every business that we've done is speed. And we strongly believe, and entrepreneurs, I can tell you one thing to entrepreneurs, always I say is speed is a must. Go to market is a must. In today's world when everything changes so fast, so rapid, I mean, you are running on a treadmill to stand where you were actually as of yesterday. If you look at quality that I'm going to manage this much of blood sugar, and I'm going to manage this much of salt loss, and I'm going to manage this, you'll never be able to do it. So that is a given. Nothing has changed, at least not in our group. I still believe that speed is a given as a foremost mantra. Well, you know, as I said, on, on trance and disaster, nobody sees the disaster. 
It was always the case. As I said, we were a $5 million group in 1994. It's only 20 years. So there have been many failures, extremely. Nobody, nobody can say it and nobody should say it because failures are the biggest lessons that you could get in your life. Anybody who youngsters who say, Aray, I have failed, they don't realize the impact that they will be seen over a period of time. I failed in certain partnerships. I failed in certain uh, ways of my decision making. Failed in choosing people. Failed in trusting people. But that's, that's life.